Greetings and salutations everyone, my name is Andrew Kirkoff and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're talking about my hidden gems for week 13 of the 2021 fantasy football season. Now after the snap that occurred on Thursday Night Football, many of us began to realize that prospects like Alvin Kamara were going to be missing for my lineups this week. But unfortunately, that wasn't the only casualty of the snap. Players like DeAndre Swift, Melvin Gordon, and many more are going to be missing from our lineups. But in order to go ahead and help us win in week 13, we're going to go across the fantasy football landscape and across the universe in order to find these six hidden gems in the names of a Javante Williams and many more. Again, these are prospects that in my mind aren't currently quote unquote hidden gems, but players that need to be started. We're going about it a little bit differently this week in order to complete the fantasy football gauntlet with the help, of course, of underdog fantasy, a superhero in their own right. As we put together the fantasy football gauntlet, the entire idea is to of course help us win in week 13 so we can get to our fantasy playoffs in week 15 and win a 2021 fantasy football championship in week 17 of course i'll talk about players some of them are potentially rostered in majority of leagues while some won't be and may give you an opportunity to go ahead pick them up off of the waivers and start them this upcoming week but either way i'll be giving you guys my thought process and opinions and the statistics as to why i think these guys are fantastic plays this week in the current situations that they're in Either way, that's the entire concept for today. I want to thank you guys for continuing to support the channel. If you guys have not yet already and you're trying to get more and more fantasy football content from me, be sure to subscribe. Again, tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I will be live streaming here on the channel with updated rankings. The reason why I wanted to talk about players like Javante Williams and the others that I'm going to mention today is because they've probably jumped the most in my rankings this week, and I wanted to go ahead and give them more context as to why I trust in them and kind of give you guys a little bit more of a secure idea rather than go ahead and throw the rankings on the screen tomorrow morning and just have you follow it blindly. Either way, that's the entire idea. So be sure to come out tomorrow morning for those of you who are interested in getting your lineup set and getting a little bit of help there, answering questions, all that kind of stuff. That's what we'll be doing. Thank you very much. Also, check out Underdog Fantasy. Like I mentioned, they're not only helping us here, but if you check out their website, use promo code Andrew today. They'll be willing to match up to $100 of your first deposit. Again, it's an extremely generous offer. Take advantage of it. Yes, the fantasy football season is coming to an end as we're already in week 13, but there's a lot of fantasy football to be played even after the regular season, whether it is the NFL playoffs and having a fantasy team throughout that entirety. There's a lot of contests to be played, you know, whether it is the NFL, the NBA, the NHL. Check those out. We're going to, of course, put together a couple pick'em slips at the end of the episode, giving you guys my thought process as to what I think is the best overall pick'ems for this week. Thank you very much. All right, let's get into this, shall we? We're talking about hidden gems for week 13 of the 2021 fantasy football season, beginning with Javante Williams, running back of the Denver Broncos. The rookie running back, I mean, the prophecy was foretold in like week five. I came to you guys in a trade targets video, and I specifically said Javante Williams, after their week was 11 by, going into week 12 against Philadelphia, would have his incredible breakout, and similar to other rookie running backs from the 2020 season, would have a breakout. And the names that I mentioned were, were the likes of a J.K. Dobbins, a Cam Akers. J.K. Dobbins took over in week 11 of the 2020 season, while Cam Akers took over his respective backfield in week 12, and they completely won teams fantasy championships because of their contributions and I think Javante Williams is exactly going to be the scenario here for our power stone this week mainly because of course Melvin Gordon is out in the prophecy that I foretold not only did I talk about the strength of schedule but I mentioned that Melvin Gordon has never played a full healthy season of 16 games since 2017 and of course the injury was looming as he'd been banged up for the last couple weeks and finally it's come to its peak he will be missing this week. And obviously the performance of Javante Williams last week gives me extreme confidence. Right now, he's only being started in 54% of leagues. That number needs to you know, increase drastically. He had 14 carries last week for 54 yards, a rushing touchdown, four targets, three catches, 57 receiving yards, all for 18.6 fantasy points. If he's able to put together those kind of performances on a weekly basis, going into this upcoming weekend's matchup against the Kansas City Chiefs, I mean, I think that's the way that they're going to try to attempt to beat the Kansas City Chiefs. If you're a Denver Broncos fan, or you watch the Denver Broncos in any capacity, if I asked you what they were best at, what defines that team, what is their identity, you would say defense. But on the offensive side of the ball, it's running the ball, dominating the clock, not turning it over with Teddy Bridgewater as he is a game manager of sorts, and being able to you know, pretty much consecutively get first downs and make the defense tired over time. And based on the way that this offense has functioned, I mean, Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon this season already combined have combined for 301 total touches and 10 touchdowns. That's 27.36 touches per game from respective running backs. Of course, they want to continue to run the ball and continue to kill clock. 
And if you're scoring 10 touchdowns within the first 11 games of your season, not counting the one that I've been mentioning for the last couple weeks, Javante Williams got a touchdown called back against the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I'm pretty salty about that one because it could have helped me win that week. Nonetheless, it's about almost a touchdown per game from these respective running backs. If Javante Williams is going to get anything close to 20 plus touches, the opportunity of a touchdown, and of course, the receiving work we, that we know he's capable of handling, he's going to be an extremely valuable running back, not only this week, but for weeks ahead as he continues to take over this backfield and continues to be the future of the Denver Broncos. Moving on to this week's Space Stone, we have Brandon Ayuk, another player that in my mind has kind of gone up my rankings over the last couple days. Though he was already relatively high, I think I had him in the top 16. I honestly think that Brandon Ayuk is going to be next level this week. And until Debo Samuel comes back, is going to be the main focal point of this offense outside of running the ball with Elijah Mitchell, which we know already they're going to do that about 20 to 30 times per game going forward, especially with Debo Samuel out now. Nonetheless, the reason why I wanted to mention Brandon Ayuk once again is to get everyone on board with the idea that, of course, he's going to have himself a great week. In the last five weeks here, from weeks 8 through 12, I mean, Brandon Ayuk has been a great overall wide receiver. He's been averaging 11.46 fantasy points per game. And the reason why I mentioned a a weeks 8 through 12, the last five weeks of the season, is mainly because I did a bunch of statistics and breakdowns yesterday throughout the video that I posted. If you want to go and check that out, it's a rest of season strength of schedule where I just break down defenses and how many points they've allowed to opposing running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, and quarterbacks uh, based on the last month plus of the season to give us a better understanding as to how well these defenses have played and which matchups we should go after. So I pretty much condensed it to that you know current format, but either way. In that time, from weeks 8 through 12, besides averaging 11.46 fantasy points per game, he's been the number 15 overall wide receiver in fantasy half PPR scoring format. In three out of the last four games, he has had 85-plus receiving yards. He has had 23.7% of the team's target share in that span of time. And with Debo Samuel out, I think that number's only going up. It reminds me very similarly of the 2020 span from week 7 through 16, in which he was pretty much dominating the National Football League, in which he was averaging 15.15 fantasy points per game, and was just completely on a tear through a seven-game stretch with Debo Samuel out. I think it's a very similar situation, and not only that, I anticipate this team to get Brandon Ayuk involved in a very similar role where they're handing off Brandon Ayuk the football. They did it last year, they've done it earlier this season, and they'll continue to go ahead and approach every week like it is as if they weren't missing Debo Samuel. In the last couple weeks, he's had like 19 rushing attempts, 181 rushing yards, four rushing touchdowns. I mean, that's just the last three games. Not to mention, again, they take on the Seattle Seahawks. Last time we saw Debo Samuel against that team, he went for 156 and two touchdowns on eight catches. There's a lot of potential this week for Brandon Ayuk. You should be starting him as this week's space stone. Moving on, we have the reality stone. And the reality of the situation for the Los Angeles Rams is this week against the Jacksonville Jaguars should be an automatic win for them. If this team has any aspirations of winning a Super Bowl, currently sitting at 7-4, what is it, a three-game slide here, they have to go ahead and get it right this week. But the conversation of topic isn't just their record and getting it straight, but it's a matter of whether or not their running backs are healthy, specifically Daryl Henderson, who is currently dealing with a quad strain. Now, though he played the entirety of last week's game, he still popped up on the injury report, didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday, had a limited designation on Friday, and it seems to me like there's a potential. Well, not only will he maybe not play, but they don't even need him to play. Sonny Michelle, in my opinion, is just as much of a running back as Daryl Henderson is. I mean, the last time we saw Daryl Henderson miss a game, which was week three of the 2021 fantasy football season, it was against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and we all know how great they are in terms of stopping the run. That being said, Sonny Michelle, 20 carries, 67 yards, four targets, three catches for 12 yards, 7.9 fantasy points. If this man's getting... 24 opportunities and 23 touches in a game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I can only imagine what his potential is going to be this upcoming week against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Not only that, Henderson and Mitchell this season as a combined duo have averaged about 23.54 touches per game and have totaled 10 touchdowns this season. This backfield has just as much potential as one that I prior talked about, the Denver Broncos, where they're getting an insane amount of targets, finding the end zone, and whoever is the starter of that respective team is going to find value. And I believe the reality of the situation leads us to potentially playing Sony Michel when Daryl Henderson is a inactive tomorrow. Moving on, we have Jamal Williams as... The Soul Stone. Now, we all know the Soul Stone requires a sacrifice. While we travel to Vormir, we have to give away something we love. And that thing that we love is DeAndre Swift. This man has been absolutely unstoppable this season. I mean, just the last couple weeks prior to his injury on last Thursday's game against the Chicago Bears, 
He was just completely going off, running for 130 yards in back-to-back -back contests. That kind of performances are very rare to find, especially out of a backfield for an offense that is losing majority of their game. And I think they broke the record for the most consecutive games of scoring less than 20 offensive points as a franchise. That is just insane statistics. But why do I have so much confidence in Jamal Williams with DeAndre Swift absence? Well, it mainly has to do with opportunity. As soon as DeAndre Swift went down in that game against Chicago, Jamal Williams came in, obviously coming off of an injury a couple weeks back, and was an immediate impact. 15 carries for 65 yards, 5 targets, 5 receptions for 18 receiving yards, and 10.8 fantasy points. In a full PPR, I think whoever the lead running back of this team is has that much more value because, of course, they love to target their respective running backs. Again, let's not forget who their offensive coordinator is. is Anthony Lynn, formerly of the Los Angeles Chargers. There's a reason why the Los Angeles Chargers in the last five seasons led the National Football League in total running back opportunities and specifically in the passing game. Either way, when I look at this matchup, I think Jamal Williams is, of course, going to get the ball a bunch. And since Dan Campbell has taken over the offensive play calling position, despite being the head coach, I mean, there's a reason why we saw the overall opportunities of a DeAndre Swift get to the point where he was able to get 33 touches against Pittsburgh, 17 on the ground against the Cleveland Browns, and obviously for both games go for over 130. I think they're going to use Jamal Williams at a maximum capacity. The last time we saw this Detroit Lions team take on the Minnesota Vikings, it was a far closer matchup, mainly because the running backs were able to impose their will. In that contest, DeAndre Swift had 13 carries, 51 yards, and a touchdown, six catches on six targets, 53 yards, and 19.4 fantasy points. Not only did DeAndre Swift find success, but so did Jamal Williams with 13 carries, 57 yards, two catches on two targets for eight receiving yards, seven and a half fantasy points. If this backfield is going to be all Jamal Williams and he's going to get himself over 20 touches, maybe 25 touches to be honest, he's going to be an incredible play as this week's Stolestone. Moving on, we have the time stone. Now, dread it, run from it, destiny arrives all the same. The question is whether Father Time has caught up to Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson a couple weeks back was cut from the Tennessee Titans despite being added to the overall team to try to fill in the stead of a Derrick Henry, but unfortunately was not able to find much success. But now the Seattle Seahawks are the next team in the next venture for Adrian Peterson's illustrious career in which, of course, he is a future Hall of Famer, but he's going to try to potentially have another ride here with the Seattle Seahawks as they need a running back and they need to reestablish the run. I mean, there's a reason why Russell Wilson has found very little success in the last couple weeks, mainly because the offensive line cannot block to save their lives in terms of the pass blocking scheme. And running the ball just hasn't existed. Alex Collins is averaging a putrid, you know, three yards per carry, which is not going to be enough. You need a running back that is going to be able to handle 15 carries and is going to get you consecutive first downs in order to make your offense more dynamic. I mean, that is the pure fact of the matter. And I think Pete Carroll, who always says we need to run the ball more, is certainly looking to do so with a person like Adrian Peterson, currently only rostered in 9% of leagues. I think Father Time may be on the side of Adrian Peterson for this last ride for the Seattle Seahawks. Taking on the 49ers may not be the easiest matchup, but I think he could very easily fall into the end zone this upcoming week. Moving on to our final hidden gem for this week, we have Foster Moreau of the Las Vegas Raiders. Earlier today, the information was given out to the public that Darren Waller will in fact be out this week due to his injury. Now, that isn't the only player that is going to be out in that Washington versus the Las Vegas Raider game. And in my opinion, the more valuable outs in that game come from the defensive side of the ball for the Washington football team. Landon Collins is going to be out. I mean, if you guys watched that Monday night game between the Seattle Seahawks and, of course, Washington football team, you would have noticed as soon as Landon Collins comes out of that game due to his injury, immediately the Seattle Seahawks get up in a four wide set. They have their very inline wide receiver run a post on a cover two. It's a cover two beater. You breed them down the middle. The safety's not able to jump that. If they're going to have a lesser secondary, which we already know they've struggled a lot this season, Landon Collins is a big miss there. Not only that, Benjamin St. Juice, their rookie cornerback, he's going to be missing some time. There is a lot of potential here in which their secondary is going to be in a little bit of trouble. And when I look at their linebackers and their PFF scores in terms of coverage, they're going to have their hands full with a guy like Foster Moreau. Just recently, this linebacking core and or safeties we're giving up a bunch of points to tight ends. Travis Kelsey, eight catches, 99. Robert Tunyon, four catches, 63 and a touchdown. Cameron Bates scored a touchdown on this defense. Gerald Everett this last week, five catches, 37 and a touchdown. I think Foster Moreau, like many of us have suspected this week, is going to be a great overall pickup and play and a great overall hidden gem for this week. Those are our six hidden gems for the 2021 fantasy football season, week 13. Before we end today's episode by snapping our lineups back 
to a successful format. Of course, we're going to go ahead and travel to Underdog Fantasy. Again, use promo code Andrew today, and Underdog Fantasy is willing to match up to $100 of your first deposit. And I'm going to put together some pick em slips to go ahead and give you guys an idea as to where I am looking this weekend. Let's check that out. All right, so we're here via the pick em section of Underdog Fantasy. We'll go ahead and tab it to make it only NFL players. So let's go ahead and give you a little bit of an idea as to what exactly the Pickums game is. If you're able to successfully select over under on a given statistic, very easily you can go ahead and put together a five string parlay of Pickums in 20 times your overall money. Now, getting five players to you know go over or under or vice versa on a specific statistic line is definitely going to be difficult. So maybe you wanna go ahead and only put together two players. You can certainly do that with two different players, three times, six times, 10 times, and then 20 times your money. Basically, that is the entire concept here, and that is exactly what we're going to try to do as I'll put together some slips in order to potentially win some money. All right, so as I looked around the entire kind of pick em slips area, I went and I found a couple that I specifically liked, and I kind of want to get, you know, introduce them to you guys and give you guys my thought process. Of course, Jamal Williams, I just mentioned him in regards to how much potential he has as a hidden gem this week, and I think 83 and a half over, you know, potential receiving and rushing yards is something that is very capable for him capture not only is he going to be heavily involved on the ground but he's going to get a lot of work through the air the middle linebacker for the Minnesota Vikings Eric Hendricks is going to be out again when your field general is not on the field it is a significantly lesser offense I think the Detroit Lions though they are potentially going to lose this game will have a lot of opportunity with their respective running backs so I think Jamal Williams is a great overall play there. Now, the next pick that I liked was Tyrod Taylor rushing yards. Again, 19 and a half. As of the last three starts that Tyrod Taylor has had in the National Football League, he has surpassed that number every single time. Of course, we know that he is a mobile quarterback and will always try to get out of the pocket. And with his running game from Rex Burkhead, David Johnson not really being very effective at all, is going to be him in a lot of third down situations and long having to extend plays with his legs was I certainly think he'll be able to do not only that I like Miles Gaskin in his overall rushing yards this upcoming week Philip Lindsay will be out he did have a huge impact in last week's game in which he had 12 carries in a blowout against the Carolina Panthers and had himself racked up a couple good yardage counts but overall I think Miles Gaskin over 55 and a half is a very easy number to be able to surpass not only that the New York Giants we've always talked about it they're giving up a lot of points to opposing running backs on the ground Miles Gaskin in the last couple weeks probably probably in the last five weeks here of the National Football League has been averaging over 20 touches per game. As long as that continues to be the case, the opportunities are there. And of course, the talent will shine through. The last of this specific pickums that I want to put together to 10 times my overall money is Antonio Gibson. With J.D. McKissick out this week, Antonio Gibson is an incredible play. Not only did J.D. McKissick play last week, but Antonio Gibson still got himself 36 total touches, 7 through the air, and 29 on the ground. If there's a scenario in which you're going to see Antonio Gibson against this Las Vegas Raiders defense run the ball as consistently as he did last week, then by all means, he is an incredible play. We'll make a $10 bid there and fire that up. Now, after we put together a pick'em slip, we can go ahead and move over to the rival section. Now, I've introduced this in the last couple weeks, but I really think this may be the best way of going about the pick'ems. It's picking between two different players and then competing over an individualized statistic. For example, Tua or Mike Gladden, who is going to have more passing yards tomorrow and they're giving Mike Lennon an additional 36 total yards. Now, we know Mike Lennon's not the best quarterback. Daniel Jones is out. And the anticipation is that Kadarius Toney and Sterling Shepard are both going to miss tomorrow. There's a potential in which Mike Lennon could very easily get destroyed by this Miami defense that, again, is on a four-game winning streak and is absolutely terrorizing opposing quarterbacks. It's not to say that it's impossible for Mike Lennon to win, but I think Tua definitely has the inside track in this given matchup. Now, as I scrolled through this Pickums lineup in the Rivals section, I, of course, found a couple that I liked outside of Tua versus Mike Glennon. Of course, Alexander Madison taking on Jamal Williams. Though I do think Jamal Williams could very easily go over that, what is that, 83 and a half that we just talked about. Getting an additional 20 yards would make it 103 yards total. I think very easily Alexander Madison is going to surpass that number this upcoming week and completely blow out Jamal Williams. I think Alexander Madison goes off. He's probably going to have a 20-point fantasy performance regardless of whether or not he scores a touchdown. He's very, very easily in line to have a 25-point play this week. But either way, Alexander Madison, I'll take him there. As for another riding back head-to-head -head matchup, we have Tevin Coleman against Miles Sanders. Tevin Coleman getting an additional 29 yards on the ground in comparison to Miles Sanders. Again, they're taking on the New York Jets. They give up a boatload of points. And if Miles Sanders is healthy and ready to go, I think he very easily wins that matchup against the Tevin Coleman. The final one that I wanted to go over is, of course, Josh Reynolds taking on Amon Ross St. Brown, the rookie wide receiver out of USC, as you can see with his jersey still on there. 
Nonetheless, the reason why I trust Josh Reynolds is because of his already built relationship and rapport with Jared Goff. Again, Josh Reynolds was a former wide receiver, not only the Tennessee Titans this year, but of course the Los Angeles Rams in years past. And with Jared Goff, he was the number three wide receiver there when they went ahead and got rid of Brandon Cooks. Last week, Josh Reynolds scored a touchdown. There is a rapport there, and I think they're going to continue to build upon it. Giving Amon Ross St. Brown an additional you know, five yards isn't a big deal in my mind. Go ahead, put this pick and slip in and move on again like i've mentioned guys there are a bunch of pickums to play whether it is if you go back to just the regular over unders you can check out the nba and i'm telling you there are a bunch that you can go through and have a lot of fun with picking over under on total points rebounds assists points all of that kind of jazz here at underdog fantasy not only that if you travel to the main screen via their draft there are a lot of contests behind me again the wild card like i mentioned yesterday the Sunday night knockout. You can go ahead and already draft for the Sunday night game. The NHL, the NBA, all of this is here at underdogfantasy.com. Whether it is playing against thousands of others, perhaps you just want to play against two or three other people, you can go ahead and compete against them and try to win the entire buy-in. It's a lot of fun to be had. Check it out. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll go ahead and transition back to our hidden gems, snap our lineups back into existence, and end the week. Thank you very much. Again, these are hidden gems for week 13 of the 2021 fantasy football season. Brandon Ayuk, Foster Moreau, Adrian Peterson, Jamal Williams, Javante Williams, and Sony Michelle. Again, tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'll be live streaming. Check it out. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And until tomorrow, I'll see you guys. Peace.